So, let me tell you something that you should have already realized by now about this fucking show you're listening to. This shit is supposed to be for mature audiences. As in grown-ups, mentally mature. It's supposed to talk about adult subjects in an adult frame of mind. It's not fucking that at all. This is two emotionally regressed, broken half-wits pretending to offer insight on movies. All they really offer you is an endless sexual perversion and a laundry list of personal paraphilia issues. You can make your own choices in life, but you have to choose this as entertainment. You know you're better than this. You have to know you are better than listening to Cinema Psyops. First consecutive week of Cinema Zions. I'm your host, Court, the guy that has been introducing this show like this for far too long and wondering why you're all still listening to it while he blares out like a trumpet, ruining all of your speakers, your eardrums, and your hope for any kind of a peaceful life for this period forward to the length of the episode. And part of the reason that you're going to be completely uncomfortable about everything going on is my co-host, Matt. There is no more peace anymore. It's over. I know we don't like to get political on this show, but I want this stated just for record just so if we ever get to go back to these we realize the day it ended today was the end of peace in europe it's over and russia has now already invaded ukraine tonight so our night their day welcome to it folks this is probably the last few episodes before kaboom (laughs) <laughs> I don't think it's going to get that bad. I think he's just testing the waters because he's grossly unpopular and he's just trying to get people to be in support of a wartime president. It's a you playbook know, I, right out of the American fucking soil. I, I sincerely hope so, because he's choosing a forever war with his speech right now. But we'll see what he does. Yeah, well, we've been on the brink of fucking dying because of Putin being a fucking madman and Trump being a fucking madman for the last uh, the, seven or eight fucking years. So The reason he's able to do this right now is because of the four years 
years Trump spent weakening NATO. So fuck him. Yeah, this is exactly what he wanted from his useful fucking idiot. And enough about yeah. the fucking politics. Uh, I know it's on, a major world event, but enough. Yeah, major world event. Just one more thing. Watch Taiwan now and see what China decides to do. That's all I'll say. Now we can go on. Uh-huh. And don't forget, you still need to apologize to Darren because every time I you bring up politics. I gotta apologize to Darren. I fucking know, all right? I'm a piece <laughs> of shit. I fucking realize things. <laughs> well, just when you get political, I'm going to remember remind you of yeah, that That's always all. always yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> well you know the political speech and this particular movie that we're covering tonight hunting ground yeah. you know not too far f- afield from each that, other because this not is too an far extreme- away from one another extremely politicized film and yeah. i don't know how it fucking does it but it refuses to really pick a side and really just shows you things pretty much right oh, down i the think middle. it picks a pretty solid side for me <laughs> it's, it's pretty, it picks a pretty solid side for me <laughs> <laughs> well that'll be a fun little debate to have about whether or not we think it's pushing some things too far forward or not i guess we'll see but the <laughs> argument for the main part of it you know is whether or not pacifism actually works, I think is what they were kind of trying to get at with this film or somewhat of a debate that they're having. And that I would agree. If you're going to say that they're trying to say pacifism doesn't work, that there will always be a time when pacifism will definitely not get the job done, then sure, I can totally say yes, the film is definitely pushing that. But I was talking more of the law and order sides of things, basically. No, 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 no. Come on. (laughs) I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. We are going to really get into it because I... I'm not even saying it just pushes the pacifism thing. And I don't even read into that so much as I read into it's pretty much fucking every fucking Republican's wet dream of, as I, this is when you need a good guy with a gun. It'll fix every fucking thing. Well, uh, I could see where you would read it that way. Absolutely. That's not how I read it. So this is going to definitely be an interesting thing because it's going to be, it's going to be a different interpretations of the same movie. So I think that's kind of what Jorge Grau was hoping for whenever he put this together. So Uh, a long time ago. Yeah, man. It's been a lot of times since we've disagreed on something like this. Well, not necessarily disagree, just different interpretations, because I'm not trying to tell you there that you your go. point of You're view right. is invalid, just that I didn't see it that way, and that's all. That, I, I use the wrong word. You're right. Yeah. I disagree, but just have different uh, interpretations. And I was just telling my wife this, too. Like, we've had a really good run of films. Like, we had, like, yeah. six or seven solid weeks of movies that not only did we agree on, but that we both enjoyed equally, and we were bouncing off of each other in the review really well just talking about all the points of the things that we liked. And while I know the audience enjoys when we do that, I think they like it more when we differ and have a bit of a bicker. So I I think maybe maybe this will be an episode that more people will enjoy before the world completely just fucking ends. Yeah, (laughs) goddamn. Just the jackals. They just want to see us tear each other apart. Well, let's hope we're all here long enough for me to get through this Legion Patreon ad right before the pirate radio edit this week is going to have a theme of class warfare mm-hmm. and classism. Mm-hmm. And violence and pacification and such. But up first is Mad Sin with Class Warpath right after this. This will keep you quiet. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. You call me Cutting a New Show. I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of the many creators you can find on Legion Podcasts. I said quiet! My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? Not that, but also, yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash legion podcasts for just two bucks a month you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to patreon and for five dollars you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie all of that available on patreon.com forward slash legion podcasts we appreciate it and thank you for listening now back to the cutting room
Damn, Madsen can fucking write a song. That was a lot of buildup right there. That was awesome. No shit. <laughs> and you know, this would be the part where I normally would tell you that blah, 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 like this trailer, but there is no trailer that I could locate for this. I had the hardest fucking time just trying to find out on IMDb because there's multiple <laughs> films called Hunting Ground or The Hunting Ground or whatever. Yeah, there, there, I, I, because I like to do a little research myself. Which, right. You know, after I've done a movie. And yeah, the, the most I get, uh, I had to put Hunting Ground and then I put in 80s movie and that's when it popped up because I didn't even know the exact year because all I was getting it was The Hunting Ground which was a huge documentary apparently about sexual assault on our college campuses. Right, and so. you were really hoping that that was not the film we were covering. Yeah, I mean, although I don't, we weren't far off with this film either. So Kind of, kind, yeah. I, now I'm starting to believe that because we found that, that's going to end up on a list at some point as well. Yeah, so the title that everybody's going to see it under and the title that I ended up having to post it under for uh, when I was watching it, like I always like to do, is Cota de Casa, which is the Code of Hunting. And it was released here in the States as Code of Hunting, but then it was finally released as The Hunting Ground. And for whatever reason, this fabulous Mondo Macabro release is titled The Hunting Ground, probably because that is the title they could get at the rights under, or, or who knows. But that's what it is. So you would find it under Code of Hunting in the English language version of the title. So there you go. That's how you're going to find the film if you want to look up some more information information on it other than what we're about to give you right here in the review. All right, let's start it off. Hunting grounds. Uh, the first 20 minutes, well, guess what? We open up in court, so we start with our first clip. Order in the court. The defense may proceed with their summation. With your permission, let's not deceive ourselves. The defendant isn't responsible for crime in the streets. The guilty party is society itself. Society encourages crime, creating dreams of success, comfort, and the desire to consume. And at the same time, it closes the doors to employment opportunities, preventing them from attaining those dreams. The Constitution guarantees every citizen the right to life and the right to work. And I ask you, where exactly do those citizens get this job, which is a responsibility, but also a right? This man has committed murder, and I'm the first of those here to disapprove of this odious act. But it's also true that he committed this crime in a moment of desperation. A victim of violence himself, this man killed without meaning to. He just wanted to escape, taking the money in a cash register of a bar. Is it not more just to describe him as a desperate man? Because many of these delinquents, which society labels as degenerates, are precisely victims of the society you in which know, they live. She makes me horny as hell. Have you ever stopped to think what it must be like to kill an innocent person to get a small amount of money? Can you imagine the torturous existence of profound desires, the desperation of an individual condemned to a life of hunger, poverty, and unemployment? Please, would the defense lawyer adhere strictly to the facts? You should know that hunger has many victims, and we'd be indebted to you if you'd let us all go home to eat. Nothing more. I hope you can digest your food. Order in the court. I remind the defending lawyer that a professional should maintain composure in a courtroom. Will the defendant please rise? Do you have anything to add to your lawyer's defense? Nothing. Ready See, this is probably the part where a lot of people are going to expect me to come at you and start yelling about the distorted noises that are in the clips. But that was kind of happening in the audio of the Blu-ray in some spots, too. So I can't tell yeah. what you might have had up too loud versus what that was happening on the actual Blu-ray in some spots on the actual audio of, of the film. Like, it could have just been the audio of the film was distorted like that in their tracks. I believe it was because yeah. that happened on occasion on me. So while watching it. Yeah, no, it was happening to me, too, like on my surround sound so much so that, like, I just put on headphones because I didn't want it popping on my speakers like that. I'd rather yeah. blow out the headphones from it. So exactly, it, it wasn't quite as pronounced and quite as bad. And I found a setting that made it much less to where I could even take off the headphones later. But it was enough to make me kind of be like, what the hell happened? And my guess would be, knowing what I know of Mondo Macabro's previous work, that's just the source material they had and they did the best they could with it. Because yes. even in some of the footage of the film, the actual images, there's varying degrees of quality and graininess depending upon the original stock that they got for the restoration but overall the presentation is still great it's just that when you deal with these older more obscure films like this you run into problems like that because some of them are not as taken care of as they should have been yeah 
Well, uh, we had a heroin doctor last week. Uh, today we have our heroin lawyer. And our heroin lawyer, she's tired of all the chauvinists in court, which they were. As you notice, that judge, he got to tell his little joke. And, you know, people laughed. He was proud of himself. When she retorted back, he was like, you have to be professional. It's like, fucking judge, asshole. So uh, Good thing anyway. that uh, life has progressed so far nowadays that women aren't treated like that in professional environments, especially in government and or uh, law. It's good to see that that kind of misogyny has been stamped out the world over, Matt. I, I don't know why you want to bum me out, like, because that exact opposite has happened, but fuck it, fine, whatever. Um... <laughs> Dick. <laughs> that, that was just a general snide remark for the entirety of gestures broadly through all of humanity. Yeah, right? No shit. <laughs> um, fucking Jesus. Uh, anyway, so then we have an opening credit scene, which is kind of weird. You know, we don't get that a whole lot uh, anymore. Like, in our older movies, we did. Uh, so then we come to the two scumbags who are talking about how she was making them horny uh, while watching the trials and everything. They follow her out as she leaves. Um, then she stops at a grocery store. She shops. And those two scumbags steal her car. Weren't uh, those guys like her clients too? Like they? No. They're, okay. In the no. marketing, they always try to say that they were her clients, but they're just in court for something they're, else. They're, they're just in court just for something else, probably. They saw her when she was, you know, uh, defending the other guy, and that's when it all went to hell. All right. So my position may have changed right from the start. Then. So she comes out and she finds her car missing, and then we cut two scumbags driving the car, and a guy comes up. You know, asking for change. He's a, you know, he's you know, homeless. And the prick robs the homeless guy of all the cash he has. Takes off. That homeless so dude we, was fucking loaded, though. Yeah, yeah, loaded on some cash. But I'm just telling you, you know what kind of a dickhole you're dealing with when, you know... <laughs> They rob homeless people. <laughs> Just saying. There is definitely a hard line in the sand where it is this person, regardless of their background, is going to be an irredeemable piece of shit criminal. Mm -hmm. There is it's, totally it's, that. And this guy is that. This long haired, so, sort of uh, unshaven uh, Don Johnson scruff like face from the 80s kind of look to the guy's uh, facial hair. Like this yeah. particular character, the dude that robs the homeless man, they are trying to drive home that this particular guy is irredeemable scum regardless of what got him to be there he will not come back from this and there is no help for him exactly um anyway so then uh we see uh our heroin lawyer she gets home and she tells her husband about the car and how all the documents she had for her cases their documents for their cottage uh that where they vacation at a whole ton of stuff was just kept in that car um fucking strange place to keep important documents in a car like i understand if her case notes are stolen because like she's going home with her case notes but to keep the rest of that shit in there, I don't know, man. That's a little too much. Okay, just a little personal security out there for everyone. Yeah. If you are carrying important documents in your vehicle and you leave said vehicle with important documents left in vehicle, this is what will happen. Yeah. You need yeah, to keep is. important documents within your grasp at all times. If you are having lunch with friends, place them upon your lap and the napkin yeah. over top of them. Yeah, never, never, never... Yeah. Um, yeah, because you just never know what, what the hell's going on around here. <laughs> yeah, and if you get mugged and they're in your briefcase and your briefcase is going to get taken, offer them your wallet instead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Pull out the yep. ID and the cards or whatever it is, what, whatever. But if they're going to take your briefcase, they're going to fucking take it. Absolutely. In which case... Tell them, tell them to look for the wallet that has BMF on it. <laughs> but basically what I'm getting at here is if it's an important enough document that contains data about your life, you don't leave it sit outside of the home and outside of a safe. That is very true. Just personal security for everybody out there. From from from, from court Matt, from the guys at Sit of Psyops. Yeah. Personal security information. Okay. So uh the scumbags we see they're going all through the documents in the car and they see that uh uh they uh, uh oh, they see that they own a cottage. Well then we cut to her and her family they're sitting down for dinner they get a phone call the husband answers, but no one says anything back. He's like, it must have been a wrong number. We see, of course, it was the scumbags, and they're like, okay, obviously they live in this apartment or whatever in the city, so that they decide they're going to rob the cottage because they're just looking to rob people. They're not looking to do anything else. So far, anyway. So far. But yeah. the leader is clearly irredeemable, borderline rapist anger. scum already. Well, he's, he's, yeah, he's definitely, yeah, and he's, he's got anger issues, 
like a madman. Well, um, okay. Yeah, I can see where his that, anger I mean, issues. like violent anger issues. Like he has a tendency for violence quicker than anything. He has yes. a short fuse. Yeah, he is quick to violence. And it's not yeah. so much that he has too much anger. It's that he has so much insecurity that he has fear panic response to violence. Um, yeah. The minute but he it's, is- a, it's a violence right away. That's yeah. the first thing he thinks to do. Yeah, it's pretty Not much like, like an argument. Yeah, it's like that Pier- uh, Percy character in The Green Mile where he's a horrible coward, but when he knows he can get away with it, he has a propensity for unbelievable cruelty just because he can. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, she then goes and visits the police station, and that's our next clip. I can't do anything more than the officer at the desk, lady. Write down the number of the car on a list and wait until it turns up, you know. Know how many cars disappear daily? No. Would you like to know? No, don't bother. I, I just <laughs> yes, wanted... Uh, just a moment. Peterson, come in, please. Yes, sir. How many stolen cars does this make today? With the ladies, it's 24. Thank you. You can go. Yes, sir. Multiply that by the number of police stations in Madrid, and that amounts to a lot of cars. You must understand, going out and tracking down all those cars, combing the streets... We wouldn't have time for anything else. But I would think the police would have some other means of solving these cases. Less every day, lady. Less every day. And if you're a lawyer, or a lady lawyer, as they say today, you should know this as well as I. We pull in the delinquents. And they're out in two days. You lawyers tie us up. And of course, later we all suffer the consequences. It's really not that important. I just believe the police could do a little more than take down the number of a car. I'm really very sorry. The truth is, you can do more than I. Because you're a lawyer. You have, I won't go so far as to say friends, but relations that are cordial would trash. I suggest that you ask around among your clients. You're well aware that there are inside dealings among trash. And naturally... More reason to help you out. It's only logical. Many thanks. I didn't mean to be rude. No. As you pointed out, I'm used to having to deal with trash. You've been so kind. It's my job. I'm thinking that maybe they are trying to push more of a liberal's bad right-wing good agenda that maybe I wasn't paying enough attention to, man. I was about to say, I was like, I really was sick, and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm up for the debate, but I'm like, I don't know how you could debate this. They are really pushing, uh, well, liberals get nothing done, so, and, and they're always going to be the victims. But where... every conservative I have ever talked to, Matt, has said that this viewpoint is actually fair and balanced. That's where my yeah. confusion came in, and thanks oh, for going see, with me on happened. that. Yeah, you got, you got struck into the fair and balance crowd. Nice. <laughs> I'm sorry. I misunderstood where the balance actually was in this because of Fox News and all of that other stuff. You're right. This is a right wing fantasy fucking film. It is. It's a complete right wing fantasy film, and it's just going to keep getting worse and worse. You know, removed from the perspective of being stuck within the film and being brainwashed by it, I now see that this is like watching Fox News only with violent action. Yeah. Yeah, this is what... Oh, wait, this let is, me rephrase that, like watching Fox News, because that's the same fucking thing these days, it's, apparently. It's it pretty much Fox News would air this and say, actually, this is a true story documentary. And see, people, this is why we all need guns. This is in a foreign country, and not everyone gets to have a gun. And this is why we're better than them. And there you go. So I'm glad that you went along with me on that and was just kind of like, come on, dude, you didn't see this? Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm glad that you went along with me on that so that I could pull this joke, and I'm glad that it was for that clip that we were able to do it in exactly right (laughs) well okay so we see the scum they visit a guy to try to sell a tape deck that they stole then they go to the lee scumbags uh home to go pick up his brother um the dude has a really unhealthy relationship with his mom uh like he grabbed her tits when he walked in yeah and then told her that because of how she's dressed she was so hot he couldn't help himself yeah yeah yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh... Did you hear what she responded to him? Yeah, I was like, hey, I gotta go out and support the household and make some money. So, obviously, she is uh, a sex worker, and... Right. 
Right, right. But she yeah. also told him that if he wanted to grab them, he had to pay because that's what yeah. she was going to go do. Exactly. Yeah. Wasn't that she had a problem with it, which makes me wonder nope. whether or not this guy's unhealthy ideals about how sex works has sprung from how he was raised because Charles Manson was sprung from a mother who was sexually inappropriate with him and also turned tricks. Well, well and we see that both brothers have their own issues, so I'm sure they were not raised. And we see mom has her own issues during, you know, at some points throughout this movie as well. So Yes. Um, what this film is trying to do and actually show relatively well in some parts having to do with this family is the cycle of neglect, uh, mistreatment, abuse, and basically just how it continues with poverty because no one ever learns any better. And the fact that your parents always beat you and did this means it's okay for you to do that to your kids. And it just continues on and on and on down the line because there's not enough education out there that says to these folks, or it's not reaching them if it is there, that says that, you know, you can be better than that. You don't get to be you don't have to do this and the system is failing them by coming in and stopping the woman from doing this before these kids grow up and maybe helping her get counseling and learn that how she should be treating her children and this is basically the end result of the system failing people 100 percent. the film does show that stuff rather well but it also goes right along and says look at this fucking scum how fucking filthy and degraded they are they deserve what's coming to them they don't need the money that they're doing this they don't have to turn this way they could go do something else basically the exact opposite of everything the lawyer's trying to say this film is trying to show you is the truth yeah yeah you are very correct um so anyway uh they find his bro and they talk to him and apparently his brother suffers from epilepsy and apparently he had an issue at the auto shop he worked at and the guy who worked the auto shop fired him and started talking shit about his bro and his bro was like well that's not gonna fucking stand they got pretty pissed off about that so uh again he's a small man who had an insult to his character and because he's yeah. such a horrible fucking coward he has to react violently to try and get the good name back because he's terrified that someone will find out the truth that he ain't half as tough as he likes to pretend he is yeah well they go to the mechanic shop and they beat the ever loving shit out of the guy and that day, the older brother does, as his buddies try to pull him off and say, hey, someday you're going to go too far. He's like, fuck that. And he wanted to kill the guy, but they just leave him pretty beaten the fuck up. We cut to some father-son bonding time back at the uh, heroin lawyer's house. And uh, the son asks the dad if you bought him a new comic today. And he goes, no, but hold on. And he goes and he grabs a book of way old comics. And it's the Phantom. And he's like, if you're careful with it, you read these. So they have a nice little father-son bond. Then the husband and the wife, uh, they talk about vacationing, and she's like, well, I'm just so busy. Uh, we get a full frontal nude in this uh, of our heroine lawyer as she comes out because she wants to get it down with the husband. And the husband, of course, is ready. And it's really the only thank you movie you're going to get out of this. <laughs> yes, there is other nudity in the film, but it is all 100% uncomfortable AF. Yeah, so yeah. you are definitely, this is definitely the only nudity from the main actors you are ever going to get that will be a thank you movie. So enjoy it while it lasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they, they have sex and that's the end of the first 20 minutes. All right. So yes, it was a bit of a work for me to say that it was fair and balanced because the idea yeah. is that's what the right wing wants is fair and balanced is their viewpoint overwhelmingly being driven forward. Forward with very little time given only just so it can ridicule the opposite side. Yeah. Yep. So whenever someone in the right wing says that you need more balance in something, what they actually mean is you need to listen to my opinion and never talk back. Yeah, pretty much. It's trust us. This is the way it worked in the 50s. So why wouldn't it work now? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the agenda this film is pushing forward. Now, uh, there's a storied history you know, of court, these kinds of films. Court, come on. It's the good old days, court. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's uh, There's a very storied history of these kinds of films where they were done pre Previously to be even more salacious and sleazeball, think Last House on the Left, House on the Edge of the Park. There was apparently yeah. a whole series of these that Spain made of like Those these sort of like home invasion kind of films. This one is one of the later ones in the cycle whenever it finally started to end. And it is vastly different than a lot of the previous one. Um, there is a much slower buildup of tension where you see basically 
the cross section of the live. So when I'm saying balance back and forth, you're seeing both sides of the victims of the crimes who are pacifists and just want to do the right thing to get people out as quickly as possible, um, which is the heroin lawyer and her husband. And then the criminals, which is the main guy that just so happened to be in court, even though the pretty much all the promotional materials are telling you that they are her clients. But basically what the film is trying to tell you is these are the people that she is going to defend or would defend and yeah. they're going to victimize her. It would have been better if they were actually her clients, even if it yeah, was that, like she was there defending their little brother on that day, mm-hmm. you know, because yeah, of some kind of probation like thing. But, some, or, but like they didn't. Yeah. And they're just like, oh, well, she's pretty. So let's, you know, terrorize her. Right. They're there. But when you say like uh, this movie's a slow build, it is. Uh, it's an hour and 48 minutes, at least the cut I want. It is, yeah. And, and really, for a solid hour and 30 minutes of that, it's slow. It's the last 15 to 20 minutes of the movie where it smacks you across the fucking face. What I think they're attempting to do is to endear you to both sets of the characters to where they start making the decisions that they make. And obviously the main bad guy is supposed to be the exact polar opposite of our heroin lawyer. So he's quick to violence. Uh, he's, you know, very fucking judgmental about everybody else around him for everything and like hypercritical of everybody and very unaccepting and very, very fucking fucking mean about everything like he's supposed to be the polar opposite they're supposed to be diametrically yeah. opposed that's how storytelling works but mm-hmm. the real innocent people that are involved in this are all the people surrounding both of our our polar opposites here because yeah. one of them is bound and determined to prove to the other one that not only is everything they've ever believed wrong that also their way is right like that's basically what's happening here is a pacifist trying to show a very violent person how they can be non-violent about things and she goes way out of her way as we're about to to see and the film really takes its time and I think what it's really attempting to do in all of this time that we're taking is to set up and establish that they are basically complete opposites who are butting heads because of a moral philosophy but it just ends up becoming this violence back and forth you know like it's kind of what they're setting up like because he believes the way he believes he just can't let anything go and he always has to keep going back and doing more and doing more about it you know yeah and the same thing with her like because she doesn't want to be violent she doesn't want to involve the police she doesn't want to identify other people she doesn't want to do all these other things and she even goes as far as what we'll see is to defend someone way more than i would have ever fucking done is like i said we're about to see but anyway at each turn every step that this film makes and as as every escalation does happen because there are moments of serious violence escalation we then hang out with them and live with them so if you're not ready to do that this film is definitely not for you and it was a definite change of pace from some of the more fast paced stuff that we have been watching but i was definitely in the mood to sit down and hang out with this movie um it's definitely not and i'm not gonna say fun watch is probably it's not a fun watch yes it, it's very not a fun watch yeah, it's, this is not a fun watch this it's is a hard watch yeah it's very uncomfortable and if you're you're at the point now where even maybe the episode will probably start to get a little more uncomfortable for some of you as well this it, is a definitely a triggering movie so if, <sighs> if you got any sort of things in your past to did this should be a disclaimer movie before you watch it yeah and it never really like you, just when you think it's not going to go there it finally fucking does and it takes it forever it, it, to get there it's an explosive yeah. amount of violence at the very end which i also I feel is very realistic and we needed to talk about yeah. it now because everybody needs to know what they're in store for because there's a lot of folks that are just going to listen to this and not watch the movie so we got to give them those content warnings up front here and yeah. I, I think we're good to move on now all right so we start the next 20 minutes um you see the father and son they're hunting the son has a brand new video camera that dad bought he's filming it they're shooting some ducks and then the son takes his first shot of the gun gets his first shell all good fun all good father son bonding time everyone had a great time yeah when you're bourgeoisie and you can afford to pay for a video camera that is top of the line in the day in 1983 for your kid just to fuck around in a boat with sure you can have a lot of fun like this and bond and be happy yes Anyway, <laughs> yes. So, uh, <laughs> goddamn, don't be mad, Court. Don't don't be mad. That was not mad. That was just an observation about how easy it is to be happy whenever nothing is oh, something yeah. you need when, to worry about because money will solve it. When they say money will, does it? Uh, when they say uh, money does it? Uh, money will bring happiness. Be like, uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> 
I, I think a lot of my problems right now in life would be, you know, taken care of with some influx of large amounts of money. <laughs> money doesn't solve everything. That is absolutely true. But what it, it can do is take care of 97% of, <laughs> of everything you need it to. Yeah, yeah. It, it, you know what? It gives you a good 95% jump start under the other 5% of shit that you, you can concentrate on that then and fix that 5% of shit that money won't fix. You know what I mean? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. We, all so, know where, anyway. we all know where we stand in the class warfare on this side of the psyops, my friend. Yeah, we can yeah. move on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um. Anyway, uh, then we cut to the family are all spending time at the cottage having a great time. Well, we see the some scumbags are outside scoping the place. They're going to plant. They're going to rob it after the people are gone, and they're going to kill their dog too, because the dog will alert the guards. Because it is a gated community area. Um, the family then watches the video of the hunting uh, and have a great time, and then they leave the cottage. There is I, what I would call. Uh, I, I would love to because this scene was one of them when the whole family sat there and they watched the video of the hunting, and you're just kind of like, "Why uh, is this in the film?" I guess maybe they're trying to make you really endeared to this family. But I was just like, it. It seems like there was an awful lot of padding in here. Now the padding was probably because they wanted you know, endear yourself to these people, so see them in a normal family life. But eh, I thought. Well, I uh, thought it was an awful lot of padding. Also, a family that has a video camera that can instantly capture, mem- capture memories like that in 1983 yeah. is kind of a big fucking deal. Yeah. They're, so they it, are... it establishes that they are the bourgeoisie motherfuckers that they are. And yeah. it also establishes how happy of a family that they are that they can't wait to watch this really fucking lame video that we saw shot live and were bored watching. Pretty much. I'm just saying. Yeah. No, a lot of it felt like uh, extreme padding, too. It's, yeah. I can see where you would totally feel that. Uh, what I feel the intention was. At least was, that's what I felt. Yeah. And I knew what their intention was. Right. But it really didn't make me like that family anymore. Um, It could be because of the dubbing or what, but I found the children to be annoying. Uh, <laughs> hey, man, I'm not going to pretend like I wasn't looking down at my phone every five minutes yeah. on a lot of this kind of stuff. I'm really not. That's what I was doing. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was pretty. I get would get pretty sidetracked with some of this stuff. I'm just that I just thought this is a great point to point it out. Is I put it in my notes at this point. I'm like, yeah, uh, we've had a few padding scenes already, and we're only just now, maybe about 25 minutes into the film, and I, we already had at least two scenes where I'm like, that's a lot of fucking padding to me. Yeah, and I get what, the, but I do understand what they're trying to do. It just didn't work for me. It still felt like padding to me, and that did not make me care about these characters any more or less. And that could just be the age of the film versus us as a more modern viewer that is used to a shortcutting way of doing all of this. Yeah, that's true. Because I mean, there are it, there are older films from this era that establish the fa- establish families in such a manner as just to hang out with them like this, I mean, and I find them just as atrocious and hard to deal with too. Uh, yeah, but we, that's we're just, very much a uh, 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 our attention span society is always very much lower. You know what I mean? Uh, we, there was a time where. You, like to go to a sports route. There was a time where if someone was said, wow, isn't football great? You would have been looked at in America and like down the nose, like whatever, dude, because baseball was the sport that everyone paid attention to. And now it's football because football moves a little bit quicker than baseball does. And I think that that same thing, we see that now in our reviews to older movies that do do that. And I'm sitting here like, uh, it just feels like padding when probably back then you probably did. That was probably your right and you're just like hey this is an amazing way to you know show this family and get you to care about them we could also just be giving this film a little bit more leeway because we're already being relatively rough with it but yeah. the pure fact of the matter is we've seen other films that are older that do even more time building up with a slow tension and do it better too yeah so yes i mean there it, there is some very uneven pacing and tone to this film uh for whatever reason even though like i said there are parts where i'm looking at my phone every couple of minutes like this mm-hmm. it still worked for me because that's what i would have been doing if i were there and they were my actual family and i would be so annoyed by them i just want to look at my phone true i, I just wanted to put it in there uh, no it's it's, I need to it's, say. it's something that we needed to talk about clearly. Yeah. It's you have to acknowledge uh, so it when you're there, watching the there movie. There are times where this movie's gonna you think that's why and, and 
because like I said, it's really the last 20 minutes that kind of hits you in the face. But there are times where this movie, you think you're getting to a point where this movie's going to do something like make you feel something. And right your their precipice, it goes into one of these kind of filler scenes and it loses it a little bit. Yeah. For you. Yeah. It's, it's it sets up, but doesn't deliver any yeah. kind of relief from the strain and or the tension it's trying to build. It just jumps yeah. to one of these scenes and you're like, wait, what? So you're getting tension blue balls constantly from the film. Yeah. The the film's edging you constantly. So um, they leave the cottage. Later on, the husband and the wife, they're talking about how his mom is coming to town. And it's going to be coming. She's coming early because it's to surprise the kids. So they're going to pick her up and uh, at the airport. But she's there early to surprise the uh, kids. Um, so uh, as they are going to the airport, we see the bad guys are pulling up to the cottage. And, like they're talking about how, oh, look, the dog already knows he's going to get some food as they walk there. Then we cut to the couple picks up Grandma, and that is our next clip. I hope I won't be too much of a headache. It was easy to take a taxi. That's ridiculous. The thought of you taking a taxi. I see that you're just as independent as ever. That's me. When your father passed on, you came to live in Madrid. I spent all my time taking care of all your father's business affairs. You know how it is. Will you stay through New Year? Until the 6th. That is if... um... Nothing unusual happens. How are the children? Fine. Growing by the minute. David even went hunting with me the other day. Oh, I can't believe it. And Laura. How is my darling? As good as ever. Great. I can't wait. They're asleep, aren't they? It doesn't matter. We'll wake them up. What we can do when we get there is uh, unload the bags. A mother will stay there and you can go to the chalet alone. It'll be easier. And... What is it you have to do up there? I have to get some things. I'll only be a minute. But can't you do it tomorrow morning? The car's in the garage. And besides, it's urgent. Well, then we'll all go to the chalet and let the children sleep. It's better that way. With all the excitement, they might not get back to sleep. I'll peek in a minute, and that's that. And besides, it's my opportunity to see your famous chalet. You're going to see it anyway, because we plan to spend the vacation there. Don't argue, George. We'll all go to the chalet. Call it just another of my many quirks. I'm positive you must suffer with this demanding old lady, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, no. Please don't say that. So this kind of changes up their plans, and now they're going to head to the coll- uh, cottage early, which kind of leads to some problems. They get there, and they find the dog is sick and dying, and the husband's afraid it might be, you know, uh, uh, rabies. He says, hold on, I'm going to go grab some. As they leave, all of a sudden, the bad guys come out, and they find her, they grab her and the mother-in-law, and they bring him into the house with the husband, who they've already caught. Uh, they're just robbing the place, and they're holding all three at gunpoint. Um, this is what I don't get. The lady lawyer decides she's going to try to appeal to their humanity in some way. And she starts talking, even though anybody assessing this situation, I'm not a professional, but I can assess the situation of a man who is violent, and a man who is not really one to listen to me talk, and as, as long as he's just taking stuff, shut the fuck up and let him take shit. And then they can get the fuck out of there. Uh, but she wants to buy the stuff. She's like, you're going to sell it anyway. She's like, I'll give you more money for it. It's just things to you, but they matter to us. And, of course, this pisses the guy off. Why is she talking to him? And she's going to give him marked bills because he's also paranoid. Uh, things go a little bit bad, and they say, all right, hand over all your other money to us. They're handing over the money, and he, the lead bad, the lead scumbag gets really rapey with the heroin lawyer and starts feeling her up. This causes the husband to burst in. They fight over the gun. As they're fighting, the mother's like, the mother-in-law is telling them to kill, kill, kill. You know, kill the guy. And this causes another guy to repeatedly punch the older lady in the stomach, which is pretty rough. As they're fighting, the gun falls and accidentally goes off, killing the husband, blowing his face off. That cut is why I think they were taking so much time and leaving us in such doldrum, is because the gunshot wound and cut of the splatter was Mm -hmm. so effective and just so out of left field when it hit that it felt like you were there and it was real. To me, anyway. Like, I got engrossed in that and it snapped 
fucked me right fucking too. Yeah. So I feel like the pacing issues may have been deliberate because of that to make this that much more violent and just shocking. I wouldn't be certain. Like I said, I, I figured that was that. And also, they did a lot of scenes with that husband to make you care about him, to make you like him so that his death affects you as the viewer. Yeah. And that does at least bit. work. When he gets killed and it's a very yeah, shocking moment. You feel moment. that a bit. Yeah. And it's not what you're expecting. And then what happens afterwards, none of this is how you're expecting it. But to me, it is extremely realistic. This is what would happen if someone gets shot yeah. in the but course of a robbery accidentally. Literally, when the lawyer, she tries talking to them, I could not have rolled my eyes any harder. For being a lawyer and somebody who's supposed to be able to read a courtroom, it appears she has to read uh, because this is in a different country. It doesn't appear they have jurors, so she has to read judges, I suppose, uh, uh, more than jurors. But for someone who's supposed to be a pro at reading a room, she did not read that room very well at all. Uh, yes, but she also probably felt like maybe she could reason with them because she does talk with people in these situations. Right, and she needs to be able to read the room of the guy who's really, uh, look, I don't know, man. I'm not saying that her character was not badly written at this moment to make it fit into a right-wing fantasy of you cannot talk to them, you cannot reason with them. Thank you. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying uh, is the character motivations could have been that. But I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying it was badly written with the idea that that may be her character motivation is that her goodness believes that she can re- rationalize with someone who we have been led to believe is nothing but pure scum and beyond reproach. Yeah. All right. Um so, uh, the killers run away, and as they're running, uh, we see the brother who was uh, uh, emptying out one of the cars out front that they drove up in of stuff. He's having an epileptic seizure. They leave him behind as they run away. So, that ends that 20 minutes. Oh, boy. So, in the commission of the crime, the brother was left behind, and a man was fucking murdered, and they didn't think to carry him, which proves, once again, the scum is of the highest order, which cannot be argued. Well... And it's, it's weird because you're going to find out it's not that they didn't want to carry him. And they were so panicked because they killed somebody because someone died. Because you can't even say, I mean, they their actions led to his death. But you can't say they killed him because the guy never pulled the trigger. The gun literally fell out of both their hands while they were fighting for it, hit the ground, and it just ended up pointing at the husband when it went off. Which is really fucking realistic to how something like that would happen. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, yeah, that's just how that shit goes. So when I praise the realism in the film, it's these moments. Yeah, because we're going to find out that they didn't exactly leave the brother behind on purpose. It just horse shit happened. But right now it appears that they just ran. It appears that they're running away from it, yeah. Yeah, and they're just running away and abandoning him like they all knew what happened to him, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, um, it, I, I don't know. We kind of talked about it. You want to start the next 20? Yeah, I'm totally fine. We got to get moving because the story is going to be kind of the same thing all the way through. We don't really need to. Yeah. We it, we don't really need to analyze it. it any deeper than what it already is. It's that she's supposed to be a pure good. He's supposed yeah. to be a pure evil. And the idea is the idealist fucking pacifist fucking left wing soft bleeding heart lady will eventually realize the right winger is right. That's basically the whole fucking plot line of the movie. We're just waiting to get there. Yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you. So anyway, the three barely get away in a van, but then the lead scumbag realizes his brother. They, they, he's not with him. So he goes, we gotta go back, and he starts fighting for control of the car, which causes an accident. They hit a tree. Uh, the other two shitheads, they're like, oh, fuck you, dude, we're out of here, and they leave. Well, he goes back to get his brother, and as he gets there, he sees cops are already swarming the place, so he has to leave. We cut to the funeral of the dad. Um... The mother-in-law and the wife, they talk about maybe selling the place, the cottage, because they don't really want to go back there. Uh, But the son doesn't want them to do that. He kind of busts in. That son is constantly listening on every conversation. And he doesn't want that to happen, so he runs in and he kind of yells at him to not sell the house. Well, the wife then, our heroin lawyer, she meets a police officer about the case, and that's our next clip. By the way, your car turned up. It was on the outskirts of town. Sit down. That's something. I stole the radio. And you asked me down here for that? No. To confirm the facts, well, we have a lead because this boy has a brother, a delinquent who's on the books as Maurice Fernandez. Maury. You know the guy? No. What makes you think I should? Perhaps he'd been involved with you in a legal case, an old client you had defended. I don't know any of the delinquents. If I had known them, why hide it? 
I would like to know your suspicions. Do you recognize this face? Yes. Was he the one that fired? The gun went off alone. Is he in jail? I wouldn't be appealing to you now if that were the problem. No. They apprehended his brother. Well, he's still waiting to be called before the judge. He's in the prison infirmary and doesn't want to cooperate. You sure he had no part in the killing? No. I stated that he didn't. At least I didn't see him. He was in the car in the midst of an epileptic attack. Yeah, I know. I saw your charitable declaration. Wow, what a dick one. Yeah. Yeah, he's uh, he's pretty shit. So she gets taken to her car, which of course is all hollowed out pretty much by this point. Well, then we cut to inside uh, prison, the brother who's arrested, a priest is speaking to him, and that is our next clip. Do it. I swear, I wasn't alone, but I'm not going to tell you their names. Johnny, this isn't an interrogation. I want to help. I really don't care if he was there or not. Your brother's a dangerous delinquent, a good boy, but much too, much too impulsive. Yes, yes, that's the word. And you, instead of imitating him, what you should do is try to help him. But you're a good boy. My brother didn't do it. Don't repeat it so often. The police will think it's a confession. You're a little naive, Johnny. That's why you get yourself into so much trouble. Don't worry. I won't say a thing. Trust me. You're a good boy. I'm truly concerned about you. You shouldn't mix with these delinquents. Sure. I know you're not guilty. Look, I'm going to do everything I can so you're here in the infirmary as long as possible. After all, you're very ill, even though you can lead a normal life. Here, the food's better and it's quieter. If you want, you might even think about helping out at Mass or even taking care of the ornaments. I don't know anything about Mass. Ah, don't worry about that. It's easy. And besides, it'll reduce your sentence a lot. You know how it works. You know, I only want to be your friend. Yes, Father. Mm, that's a good boy. Ah. Here, why don't you read this book? It's the text for Mass. So you can get familiar with it. Hmm? Bye. Father, do you believe me about my brother? Of course I do, Johnny. Why would you lie to me? I am your friend. Huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that wasn't creepy at all. Nope. Jesus. Uh, all right. Uh, so anyway, uh, the cops then show up, uh, to the main scumbag's house. Uh, the mom's like, oh, he's not here. Well, another one of the guys who did the crime with him see the cops there, and he goes and tells the guy about it. So the guy shaves his chops off. He had these really thick mutton chops, buzzes his hair, and colors his hair red. Like After this, red, red, like fucking red, red. Chucky doll red. Yeah. Yeah, it's like severely red, like all red. Then the uh, bro's mom's visits our heroin lawyer, our lawyer heroin, heroin lawyer, uh, heroin lawyer, and that is our next clip. What can I do for you? Well, I'm Johnny's mother. The boy they arrested the night that—that that means you're the mother of Maurice Fernandez, I suppose. Yeah. What do you want from me? They've told me you're a very nice person. That you always defend the underprivileged. And why come to me? I understand they've appointed a public defender. Why not go to him? <laughs> you're a mother like me. I know you'll understand. I have nothing in life except my children. <laughs> a public defender, you know how they are. They really aren't very interested. All lawyers are sworn to their duty. No, I didn't say that. I only wanted to tell you... When the trial begins, that you Don't should... you realize your son murdered my husband? An accident? It was an accident. He's not like that at all. He wanted to make off with a few things because there's not work. You know that as well as Control I do. Control yourself. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know that Barry moves in bad circles and gets into a lot of trouble, but... That's not the same thing as murder. Listen to me. I don't have anything against you. But I'd prefer not to speak about your son, understand? I know your son in jail won't bring back my husband. I'm also sure his death was an accident. I stated that to the police and I repeat it again in the courtroom. But 
I'm sure your son's a criminal. I saw it in the vicious way he threatened me with that shotgun. I know you're lying. My son might be a vagrant and lazy and good for nothing, but he's not a criminal. A criminal are all you who judge the rest of us. You know nothing at all about the rest of us, do you? What do you know about me? I just finished telling you that I declared it was an accident and I will state it again. What else do you want from me? You know you've got answers for it all. You're a lawyer and lawyers have laws for everything, don't they? But you should say, my son. John is an epileptic and he's in jail and I'm sure he did nothing at all. I'm very sorry, but I'm going to try and forget you and your sons. I refuse to do anything more. Try and understand. And now please leave me alone. I've told you I won't do anything unfair to them. But don't touch me. A lot of babbling and a lot of fancy words, but you've got me where you want me, you know. What do you care about the suffering and the poverty of the rest of us? But I'm warning you. I warn you that if anything happens to my two boys, you've got hell anything to pay to me. Done. The lady's just leaving. Who's this, your pimp, you bitch? Come on, lady. I'm not any lady. I'm a prostitute and the mother of two Come on, this way out. I would just a gutter family. Come That's on, what lady, we are. Please. And you've met us what we are without getting your hands way, dirty. And you rob Come more on. than the rest of us, you That's it, lady. bitch. If you ever needed any reason to doubt why I said that this is a right wing talking point, this person that goes in to basically go at the lawyer and try and get her to do more to get her son out of jail or something along those lines, then basically what this lawyer should even really be willing to do, the heroine that she is anyway, uh, they really kind of drive it home where she's like, oh, it's not my fault I'm like this. You made me like this. And it's totally a right wing talking point of how the poors should try to talk to their betters quote unquote yeah yeah and also i do you don't understand stan what this mother wants because even the lady's like i'm gonna tell the courts and everybody that the the shooting was a complete accident he can't you know that all this other stuff i mean what did she want her to do just drop everything i mean that lady also has to understand that woman's husband's dead so yeah, her son, Sand. her son that was epileptic may not have been in the house, but he was found after there. was found there and is basically being held because he's not talking. Well, he's also being held because he did was in the, you know, he was in possession of things that he had robbed. So they knew he was part of the crew. So at least for nothing else, he's in jail also because he's, you know, arrested for uh, robberies. And he was in the middle of robbing the car. Well, you see the guys running out. You, got, you see the guys running out with the stuff, but he yeah. basically got found with the car because of his seizure. Yes, with all yes. the stuff. He, he, he was robbing the car when he started having a seizure. Yeah. With, with the mink coat that he took off the mother-in-law and then a ton of other stuff that he was probably taking from the car. They look like cash and stuff. Yeah, enough to but, tie I mean, him to it, but he had the and, seizure and that's where they found him, yeah. And I have no idea if they have, like in America, we have the RICO law, but if they have anything like that, then he's responsible for any deaths that happened in the act of that robbery, even if he didn't pull the trigger. Well, the commission of the crime thing, I don't know if it does exist in Spain. It clearly didn't at the time because the woman kept saying it was an accident, it was an accident, because yeah. he's trying to not have anyone get charged with the murder. And really, not having someone get charged when they are so clearly in part of the crime with a murder yeah. is more than merciful enough. And, and you shouldn't get murder on that, but it, it, because if it is an accident, because no one did pull the trigger, but unfortunately they're not supposed to be there, so that is if nothing else, manslaughter. Whatever it is, it's an automatic charge whenever a death happens in the commission it, of a crime, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Even uh, if this person anyway. has a fucking heart attack, you get charged yeah. in the commission of a crime. It does happen. That's a fact. In yeah. the States, you, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if somebody in the States has an, uh, you know, uh, yeah, has a heart attack, anything that you didn't even cause, if you were in the scene, you're you're responsible for that shit. That's manslaughter. Yeah, you pull a gun in a bank, someone has a fucking aneurysm pop in their head that could have happened at any minute anyway. You're responsible yep. for their death the minute you pull yep. that gun in the bank. Exactly. Yep. Well, uh, that night she gets uh, there. She's watching TV at home with the the family, and there's a phone call, and she answers it, and it's the main scumbag saying that she's got two days to get her bro to get his bro out of jail or else she will suffer greatly uh 
after that uh, call, they put everyone to bed and everything. The son goes to bed. You can tell the son's kind of in a mood. I mean, his dad did just die. Uh, anyway, they're hanging out and the mother-in-law wants to know what's wrong. And cause she can tell something's happening after the call. She says it's just work and then tells her about the visit from the mother. And that is our next clip. I had a visit from his mother. She was desperate. You don't mean to say you feel sympathetic. I don't know. What did she say? She didn't know what she wanted. And you are the same. The mother wasn't to blame for what happened. Are you really sure? Children are just like their parents, Adela. Never forget that. I would like to forget all this. Forget? I don't understand you. Do you know what you're saying? I was too hard on her. I felt terrible. I don't know if you're gullible, or very responsible, or truly one of them. The ones who are trying to destroy us. They're not trying to destroy all of us, they're trying to live. I can't believe you said that. How can you justify their actions after they just killed your husband? And don't forget that George wasn't only your husband. He was also my flesh and blood. And David and Laura's father. Do you think the rest of us are as forgiving as you are, Adela? Please. Try and understand my situation. I'm a nervous wreck. If it weren't for the children, I'd never set foot in your house again, Adela. You can do what you please. You'll do it anyhow. This is too much. Comprehension, forgiveness for his killers, and indifference, iron and cruelty for the ones who love you. You know what I believe it is? Cowardice, Adela. Cowardice is exactly what it is. Please leave me alone. You think I'm not sorry about his death, but you just sit there doing nothing. So what can I do? Find out the truth and punish those criminals. I promise you I'd know what to do with them if I got my hands on them. Murder the murderers and cut the hands off the robbers. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That's what I call playing at God. Well, it is. And those criminals. I'd like to murder them with my own hands. Come, please. Don't shout. David might still be awake. I'm glad. He should hear. I want my little David to hear all this. That dignity still exists. And not grow up thinking we're all cowards like you. And little David was listening to this whole fucking thing as well. Uh, anyway, that's the end of the 20 minutes. All right. I don't know if you've noticed or not, but between the previous 20 minutes ending and this 20 minutes ending, the pace is quickening and the tension is building and it is trying to move forward as things begin to ratchet up. Uh, but I start to feel that the reality portion of the film that we kind of had earlier with the actual confrontations and how things like this actually would happen and take place um, is starting to dwindle a little bit in that this lawyer has just been threatened with violence if she doesn't do something, yet refuses to get some kind of police protection for her family or even request some kind of help, which would be the sort of pacifist way where she herself won't be doing anything, but they need to have someone watching the house to make sure that no one comes for her because she's just been threatened. That's standard procedure for any lawyer or anything involving law to have some kind of, even just a private investigator or someone to keep an eye on the house. I mean, if they lived in a gated community that was guarded, you think they would have even more guards wherever it is that they're supposed to be even yeah. um but she refuses to do that and it feels like they're trying to do the justification with the dialogue that we just heard that in her mind she can rationalize this away and speak with them and make them realize that she has no control over what's happening with her brother the brother and make him get away and she just needs to find a way to explain that and therefore mm-hmm. she doesn't need to worry about this being an actual threat because they would not they wouldn't actually do that or something i, I don't know exactly exactly what it is that right. she it's thinks a, she can it's, do it's, it's another one of the baffling moves she does in this movie that um uh, it's where it loses me a little bit because you can tell it's obviously doing it just to move a story of a movie along. No rational person would be making these choices she is making. No, it's at this point when the film drops any pretense of even trying to show you a balanced position as far as what her belief structure is and what is actually reality. I, be- yeah. I believe that the film is trying to tell you at this point that all pacifists are weak-willed cowards that just let whatever happens to them happen to them. Not- all liberal 
girl's bad, <laughs> and if you're conservative, you're big and tough, and you're you'll protect your family. Right. It's if obviously not, it's obviously pushing that already by the fact that yeah. everything that she tries to do fails miserably because she's not taking a hard line. Yes, but they're also trying to really take over one at pacifist and make it seem like a pacifist will not take steps to defend themselves. You yeah. know, and that's not the case. A pacifist will do literally anything to try to avoid violence that doesn't mean that they won't defend themselves when they have no choice exactly (laughs) and this film is taking it to the pacifism to a level that they made on mandalore in the clone wars series for fuck's sakes yeah right jesus christ like where i'm like mandalorians you don't know how pacifism works if you think this is how pacifism works this isn't pacifism what you guys are doing (laughs) it's 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 a weird spot you're in. <laughs> <laughs> there is a time when defending yourself is good, and when defending yourself means you're not going to get raped or violently fucking hurt, then yes, or it's okay to defend yourself. Turn to glass. <laughs> <laughs> right. Jesus fucking Christ. Well, it's <laughs> like, I don't know who put that plot line into the Clone Wars shit, but they clearly wrote this fucking movie too, is all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, probably, right? Jesus Christ. <laughs> we can move on because I'd rather talk yeah. about Clone Wars and Mandalore than this, so we right? need to move now, on. Now you're starting, yeah, yeah, I know, I can't believe you brought it up, because you know what, that's gonna fuck out, uh, now all I want to do is talk about the destruction of Mandalore. Hey, you know Sorry. what, maybe maybe you and I can get into that Star Warsy shit and make it a Legion-only Patreon thing for everybody. <laughs> yeah, maybe, there you go, we'll watch the Clone Wars together and figure out what the fuck was Mandalore thinking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if that's what people want to hear, they just have to chime in. Right? All right, well, the next 20 minutes, uh, we set, we cut to uh, court time, and there's this guy, he's on a hook for an assault. For like a second there, uh, I thought you meant me. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and then the lawyer, uh, it's time for her to kind of say her piece after the judge kind of says his piece, and she finds it hard to defend him, almost like she's having all these second thoughts about life. And she pretty much says everything's in the statement. My my client said everything. I asked for the minimum amount. And, you know, sentencing will be later. The passion's gone because she's starting to realize, Matt, that the right wing is actually right. All right. So uh, then she we cut to she talks to the judge who is going to be prosecuting the case of her husband of the younger brother that's in jail right now of her husband to her husband's murder in this judge apparently also taught her in school and that is our next clip adela you truly have a heart of gold i can't believe you've come here to ask me to be lenient with your husband's killers that's turning the other cheek too far my dear i don't want to sway you i just like to tell you the facts as they happen judge let's be serious adela i'd be delighted to have a drink and to chat with you but i know what you're going to tell me well let's assume the boy is innocent very well but he'll be guilty tomorrow my dear if we are too lenient today forgive me your honor but your interpretation of the events is too simplistic call it simplistic adela but it's sufficient they need to know that justice exists adela you know my opinions judge i know you believe humanity is pure and society is corrupt it's an idealistic point of view but mistaken naive i would say there are good people and there are bad people of all political leanings you know that's the way it is maybe i'm being naive but i need to trust humanity the day i come to believe the whole world is a hunting ground life will begin to lose all sense for me are you okay I haven't had any attacks since I've been here. Really, Mom, I'm, I'm doing okay. Don't worry about me. I can take care of myself. You know that. Don't worry. And the lawyer, was he here to see you? I don't trust the guy. He's friends with that lawyer broad out at that house. My two boys. Why in the world did you get yourself into this? Why in the world did you get yourselves into this? What's important is that they don't get married. It doesn't matter to me. I'll only be here a few months and I'm okay. The priest is my friend. You know what Maori says. You shouldn't have become an altar boy. That's just for snitches. That's not true. I didn't say nothing. The priest is the one who talked me into it. That's I not it, I swear. I didn't say nothing. I tell Maury I didn't say anything to the priest. I didn't say anything to become an altar boy. I'm not a squealer. I'm not a snitch. He knows you wouldn't say anything. The one who talked was the lawyer. He says you shouldn't let the father protect you. 
The rest will think you're a squealer even if you're not. And you might end up with a knife in you. I didn't ask for it. Talk me into it, and that's the truth. Tell Maury that I'm gonna stop it. Tomorrow morning when I go to mass, I'm gonna fuck him over and ram that chocolate right up his ass. Tell him that, Ma. Will you tell him? Sure, I will. You promise? I promise. Worst mother ever. Really? Causing him undue necessary stress. She was told by his lawyer that if he becomes a uh, altar boy, everyone in prison thinks he's a snitch. And they do. Apparently, if you become an altar boy with one of these priests, you're a snitch. So, it's not good. Uh, but she doesn't need to help. When your son has already issues with epilepsy probably not good to stress him out unduly especially since he's going to be in prison too yeah see i didn't uh, i didn't get that from the dialogue and wait I, real quick we need to say it uh the uh, uh our uh heroin lady our heroin lawyer she said the title of the movie yeah so that was in there uh it completed it for me and i'm done uh with the review uh once that happens i'm i'm over so we can end the show <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Jesus. Matt's Matt's making weird rules over here. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> no, there's more movie to go. Um I just I guess I didn't get her saying that it was the lawyer that told her that. Like I just guess I didn't understand that that's what she meant. Yeah, that's what she meant. Yeah, because it <laughs> I just it just didn't make any sense to me like why just becoming an altar boy automatically makes you a snitch but if that's just something that happens in the prison and that's something he's got to deal with because he's going to get in da- he's in danger then I understand why she's telling him that but yeah she clearly likes to wind up her kid like, like I think yeah. she likes to make him have seizures it's like fun for her and I well, think and I that's what she's trying for to her, do but here's what I think it is it's not fun for her my thing is this um well she is insanely i'm not saying she's a good mom i think she also doesn't know how to uh nobody in that family knows how to approach things in a calm demeanor or to try to keep their head in a crisis so she's flipping out constantly because she's afraid that her kid's going to be branded a snitch because he became a uh, you know a pre so uh uh altar boy so she tells him that which in turn is going to stress him out and then we know the older brother is nothing but a big ball of fucking violence and stress so just knowing that family can handle stress real well and it and it delivers itself in different ways and the older brother it results in violence the younger brother it results in his epilepsy coming up or him freaking out at any little thing and for the mother it comes with doomsday it's everything's done everything's a doomsday everything's over once a little bit of stress happens yeah i don't disagree with that uh, assessment at all sure um (laughs) i just really had a hard time with connecting with her at this point because for me this oh, yeah, no it's terrible yeah at this point the her talking to him in the prison and the whole stuff with him being like an altar boy and a snitch is the equivalent of the family sitting around watching the video of, of them hunting yeah like yeah, it, this it's, is their it's, family time and the reason i recognize it as family time is because this is the type of family time that i can recognize <laughs> So the family goes back to the cottage, and the boy asks his grandma where his dad died, and she shows him. Um, also, the cottage, like, all the guns were still out. Everything was still in kind of disarray, uh, so they were picking that up. Back in jail, the priest gives uh, the brother some candy, and after the priest leaves, the bunkmate asks him for a hand job so he can get his strength up for the priest. So you're like, Jesus Christ. Um... Uh, then, uh... Not inaccurate for priests, really. No, not, no, not inaccurate at all. Then we cut to this mass time, and you can see all the guys uh, during the mass are calling the little bro a snitch. They're all whispering that he's a snitch constantly. And then the little bro tries to beat the shit out of the priest, so they take him away. Uh, we cut to the, all the kids are playing, and the mom says she has to leave. She's leaving with them with grandma, so she has to work. The boy brings all his little buddies into the house and shows him his dad's guns and then shows him the first shell that he ever shot. And that ends that 20 burnets and brings us into the final third. Let's just go. It's all the same Let's fucking stuff. Yeah, it's all yeah. the same shit. We, we yeah. kind of just got done going through it. Yeah. All right. And here is where shit's about ready to, you know, face fuck you into oblivion. Yeah. Okay. So um, the content that we were trying to warn you about is fucking now. Yeah. Like this yeah, is how long now. it takes. It's like this is it. Like the last it. twenty minutes of the movie, basically. Yeah. yeah. So if you're never gonna watch the movie and you're just listening to us right now, and you 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 this type of stuff really gets to you trigger warning because it's about ready to really fuck you up. Yeah. Shit's gonna and, get intense. We're not kidding. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, well, the mom is shopping, and we see the main scumbag and one of his scumbag friends. They see her, so they corner her in a uh, parking garage, and they get into her car, and they all drive away. Uh, as they're in traffic, he tells her, you know, his bro has to be out before Christmas. She needs to tell the cops that she lied and that her husband killed himself. Then they begin assaulting her by groping her. Uh, at one point, cops are next to him, and he's like, you better smile. She goes, I can't, so he starts forcing himself to kiss her. Um, then they, you know, he cuts her bra and everything, and they feel her up. Even the other guy feels her up before they run away uh, out of the car. Uh, as she gets home, her son's kind of being distant with her, and that is actually going to lead to our final clip. What's wrong, baby? Are you angry with me? Nothing's wrong. I know you're lying. And you never lie? What do you mean? When have I lied to you? Yeah, what about that man who calls you on the telephone? The one when he calls you always says it's a wrong number. I bet you saw him this afternoon. What are you saying? He called a little while ago to see if you're back from shopping. He sounded drunk, laughing and joking around. Listen, David. There are things that are difficult to explain. I don't want to frighten you. I'm not frightened. I know that. But I don't want to scare Laura or Grandma. The man who called is a criminal, and I don't know how he got our phone number. He followed me to the car when I got your gifts. And when I put away the packages, he pulled out a knife and took everything I had. You understand now? The same man who killed Dad? I don't know. You're a liar! Is it the same man? Why don't you do something? You're scared. I wish you were dead. Don't shout. Don't shout. Why don't you kill him? I'll kill the guy. Don't speak of killing, David. Killing a criminal will make you into a criminal. You understand? You can't fight violence with violence because you just end up with more violence, David. Understand? Grandma's right. You're a coward. David, please don't say that. Everyone's against me. I can't go on like this. If someone would have hurt you, Dad would have protected you. What do you want me to do? What can I do? No, I can't. Don't cry. I can't. I'll defend you. You shouldn't worry. I'm a man and I'll take care of it. My father taught me how to shoot with a rifle, you know. My son. Don't cry. That was actually a pretty touching and uh, yeah. a very good moment that we do need and to. And also will help set up the end, but the son is now okay with his mom. And, you know, everyone's all hard and shit until their mom cries in front of you. And then, you know. <laughs> well, there's that. And what he thought was going on was that she was already seeing another man. And he was wondering how that had to do with the death of his father. And he was wondering if maybe his mother was to blame. And he's looking for anything other than my father's death was a meaningless accident in the commission of a crime as a kid is what I was yeah. getting. It, it, because yeah. he was talking about a man sounding drunk and laughing. And, you know, it's not supposed to be anybody. It seems like he thought she was cheating and that possibly he thought she had something to do with it. Her, yeah, his father's uh, or or at least she's moving on or some shit like that. Right. Either way, he's pissed about it and not happy. And when he confronts her and she tells him that it's something else, he can clearly see something is wrong with her and something has happened and that it was not in any way, shape or form what he was thinking. And he immediately goes back to being the sweet and loving little boy that he is. Yeah. We cut to then the bro in jail. He's in solitary confinement. They give him his food, but he kind of flips out on the guards and they toss him back on the bed and they just didn't put him in solitary. They stripped him naked for it. They give him all sorts of shit and they close the door and they walk away and as he's freaking out, he of course has a seizure. He also falls day, back and hits his head and there's a blood splatter on the wall yeah. after he does so. The next day uh, the scumbag bro, he gets a call that his brother's dead. Scumbag's mom has to go identify the body. Um, so then uh, the scumbag's bro, he watches the funeral from afar of course. That's a pretty heavy paperclips moment where he pretty much says he's going to really do some horrid fake shit to uh, our heroine lawyer. Which he kind of does, all the shit he says he's going to do. Yeah. Well, that night, the family prepares for Christmas. Um, the uh, Our heroine lawyer, she's watching a video of the boys hunting, just kind of enjoying that. And then the guys break in the house. They have the kids. They grab her. They start assaulting her. Uh, pretty much force the main scumbag forces her to do oral on him for a bit. This scene in front of her causes the mother-in-law to 
Mika dive for the phone. She calls 911. She starts asking for help, and one of the other guys hits her over the head with a lead pipe. It's not really sad, but she's definitely dead. Uh, that uh, amount of blood splatter and the way that her yeah. body's laying afterwards, it's heavily her implied. Age. Yeah, she's gone. Yeah. She's gone. She's gone. And it's a pipe. He caved in her skull. Yeah, one of the jerks punches the sun out. The sun starts waking up, and the guy is... It looks like he's raping the mother and the main scumbag as he's on top of her and she has been stripped down. Uh, But she is straight up no selling this as she looks at her son. She is not making a sound, nothing. She is straight up no selling this. He then gets up and tells one of his buddies to warm her up for him. And we can see he's trying to jerk his little pud and he can't get hard. So he wasn't even really raping her because not for lack of trying, he just fucking couldn't. Okay, he's still raping her. There just wasn't actual penetration. Yeah, there's no penetration. He was sexually assaulting her. Yes. But he couldn't penetrate her because uh, he's obviously a fucking, you know, worthless piece of shit. And, you know, I don't know what the hell is going on with him. All right. He's he's having his own problems. Okay. He's clearly impotent in this scenario is what's going on. But I think it's because he doesn't have the power and he's actually a scared little boy and he's terrified of everything that's happening and he's trying to pretend like he's not. And here's my next thing, though. And maybe this is another thing. This is something I want to bring up. For all his talk, he always talks about how horny every woman makes him. He always talks about how he's he's getting real horny, how he's getting real horny. Well, here's a point now he can't get it up. Do you think maybe he's just straight up always impotent? Like he never can get an erection with anybody? And so he talks about being horny all the time and how women are making him horny all the time because that's his defense mechanism. Like, so no one thinks he can't get it up. Which is also why he has to be sexually assaulting everyone because like there's a chance that he's going to get stopped before he can reveal it. And now it's been fully revealed revealed that nothing's going to happen. Yeah, I'd, I'd totally take that take as well. See, what I thought of it was is that in reality, he is just terrified of everything all around him and always lashing out violently because he is a coward. And in this case, he got himself into a scenario where he wanted to feel powerful and he wanted to feel like he was in control, but it's the exact opposite. And he panics and he just keeps getting more and more vile and violent about everything with what he's trying to do and what's about to happen. But yeah, he's definitely impotent in this situation. He definitely I think he's just always impotent. Yeah, I think I, his, I don't disagree I think, with that interpretation. Yeah. I just say I I'm, believe his mother sexually assaulted him to the point, or at least if she didn't, she left him in situations where he could have been that there's there's nothing going on downstairs. And his whole every single female who talks to him makes him horny is the the deflect. Yeah, I don't disagree with that interpretation. It's just not one that I necessarily saw because yeah. I that too easily codes him as also a victim and I hate him so much I don't want to accept that. You get what I'm no, saying? I mean, I get what you mean there. Yeah. yeah I, I, like I, I don't want him to he, he's not a victim to me. He's a he's a scumbag piece of shit. Right. Once you and, uh, once you hurt people just because you yourself were hurt, that is when you become a monster. Yes, exactly. And that's your he's, victimhood is over. Yeah, and absolutely. You are now. You are now. You just became a monster yourself. That's all that happened. Yeah, yeah. Once well, you continue to victimize others just because you were hurt as well, that's where you are a monster. Yeah, you are no longer a victim anymore. You are now just. A yeah, monster. I don't disagree with any of that. We're trying. And to- I and I and I don't want to like because unfortunately I I have seen these arguments online where people will say now that we are you know taking away this person's trauma and we're or ignoring their trauma. Well, we're not. But unfortunately, when you become something like this man has become, I no longer view you as a victim. I no longer view your trauma as being relative. You are now causing trauma to somebody else. So, sorry. Once you perpetuate a crime or once you harm yeah. someone else, once you victimize someone else, yeah. that victim needs to be attended to. And then we can talk about getting you some help after you atone for what you've just done. There you go. Um. Anyway, we're we're kind of putting this off because here comes... Well, you're as, fucking as, right as, we are. Jesus fucking yeah. Christ. Because as, as much as you think we were hitting the worst part, we weren't. Here's the worst. Anyway, he stares into the fire as he tries to jerk his little pud, and he gets an idea, and he says, I have a way to warm her up, and he pours alcohol all over her vagina, and then takes a burning log and shoves it onto her, causing her vagina to light on fire. Everyone freaks. Then, they pour alcohol all over her daughter's head, and they're going to light her head on fire. As they're dragging the daughter to light her on fire, the boy comes over, he has grabbed one of the guns, he kills both of his buddies, just pure shotgun blasts, which are great before they can light the sister's head on fire. The main scumbag takes her, 
hostage, the 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 uh, the lawyer takes her hostage, and as he's backing out, he she's telling him to shoot him, to shoot him, and he can't, and she, he drops her and just runs out. She grabs the gun from the boy, fires a couple shots, and hits him right in the midsection. Pretty good shot. Looks like she and gets him some- right above the like in the spinal column, just above the pelvis, because he has to drag himself. He can use his arms, but his legs look dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, but yeah. And as he's out in the forest, they wrestle for the gun a little bit, but his wounds get the better of him, and he kind of slinks away in the night. She's looking. He sees a car. He starts crawling to. The children see. The boy screams for his mom. She finds him. She walks over as he's by the car with the shotgun level towards him. Looks like she's about ready to take pity on him and not do, uh, not kill him as she starts lowering the gun. And instead of just taking that, he goes to grab the gun, which sets the gun accidentally off. Uh, I don't think she meant to shoot him. Blows his face off. Blood spurts all over his her face. She completely loses it as her life is just kind of crumbled around her. Uh, as her children watch from the doorway, the video still plays on the TV of a very happy family that has been destroyed. Roll credits. <laughs> This is way more, way more pushing a right wing agenda than any of the yeah. fucking Death Wish movies ever did. Oh, yeah. This is way more right wing than Death Wish. Way more. <laughs> uh, yeah. Court, did you see how a gun solved everyone's problem? Yeah, just one good kid with a gun who was taught yeah. the proper way to shoot it so he doesn't even break his collarbone so he can continue to shoot it. Yeah. He was able to save the day against several men. Uh, of course. And then once Come the on. once the mother empowered herself by taking a gun and removing her stance of pacifism, she was able to also make sure that no one escaped that night. Yep. But they also have the guy get killed by accident, proving once again that she was going to take mercy on him, but because he grabbed the gun, it goes off. Yes. <laughs> and it's really uneven, and it's really... So really, it's just as long as guns are around, things can be fixed. Yeah. Guns will automatically solve your problem whether they go off by accident or not. Uh, yeah. One of the things that I let you grace fully skip over which i will now talk about um the salacious way in which the shot with the vagina going up on oh. fire um just all right i thought i'd done enough but go ahead <laughs> no I, we need to talk about the choice of where the how they frame the shot they actually do a full on frontal shot of the actress's bova mm-hmm. bon pub is everything i mean you see all of it i saw everything and then when they set it on fire it looks like it's her actual body catches on fire i don't know how they pull that off but it is yeah. shocking and absolutely horrific and we're right up there just like it fills the entirety of the fucking frame before it catches on fire yep for like oh, yeah. for like a good hot second to where like you're looking at it and you can't believe that they're about to fucking do it and then they fucking do it and then like you yeah. don't know how they pulled that off and you don't want to know how they pulled that off no no not at all um they make it look like because it was alcohol the alcohol went up really really quick and obviously it burnt yeah. the hair but like the way she was moving afterwards made me think that maybe it wasn't very severe in the burns yeah i don't think um like i got worried that i thought the way they shot it made it look i thought that they actually stuck it up inside of her but i don't believe so i believe they literally lit her top part on fire where they poured the alcohol because the way she was walking afterwards i don't think you could do that after if it was you know put up inside like that yes he you know just I mean? he just lit her I pubic hair just, on fire is yeah, all he did yeah, yeah that's where the yeah but still uh fucking horrific and disgusting and and the fact that they go right up in on the business end and just just fucking force that on you like right after i saw that i was like i should probably text matt and i'm like eh, i'm gonna let that be because i don't want him to know ahead of time i don't want him to dread it before it happens i'm like he's got to experience as i did because i had no fucking clue either i kind of had dread anyway uh leading up to this end i'm like this this is all this especially when the brother died i'm like all this pre uh, all this posturing all this stuff is such a large preamble to something coming and then when the brother died i went uh, uh, yeah <laughs> i was like yeah something bad's really gonna happen i didn't think it was gonna be this it it, it, it jumped up a notch definitely but oof, 
Mm. It's a long road to get to this point, and the escalation points make sense. I think in a modern version of this film, you could definitely condense a lot of this stuff down. Um, thankfully, the amount of rape I was expecting to end up at the end of the film was significantly less than what we actually got, but the direction that they went was somehow more horrific to me. Like, I think the reason that they chose that was because it was this horrific idea of lighting someone's genitals on fire and then immediately showing full force intent to light a little girl's hair on fire immediately afterwards after forcing her to witness this brutal assault yeah, before that's they even what I got like the children had to witness their grandmother being murdered and then the sexual assault of their mother so the the children are witnessing on Christmas this. Eve on Christmas even Eve no yeah, less. on Christmas Eve yeah and if one of the right before it's get ready to happen the guy tells the kid that he has to watch it so he can see how it's done right basically yeah oh, fuck it. yeah uh <laughs> there are some very oh. irredeemably horrid choices that definitely happen in this film and it's definitely escalated it's a downer, man it's escalated to the actual extreme and it is it's a total fucking bummer it's a really well-made film it yes does exactly what it is that it's trying to do and it drives home every single point that it's trying to drive home i just happen just to disagree with everything that it's trying to say and i'm, I guess, I'm like, fine with I that i don't i don't know how much i think of it as it's a great film uh it's a film i'll never watch again <laughs> nothing i'll watch a second time um it's message it's trying to i guess you could say it's great in as in the message is trying to push comes across loud and fucking clear but much like you, I hate the fucking message. So I don't know if I would have preferred to, I don't know if I can call it a great movie or even a good movie. I will call it a movie that effectively delivers the message it wants to fucking deliver. Okay. Well, uh, with, uh, with just enough sensationalism and, uh, exploitation shit at the end to, to get it to, to, you know, push it over. But like I said, I can't call it a good movie. All I can say it effectively pushes the narrative it wants to push. Yeah, this very effective. This is not a kind of film that you're going to watch for entertainment's purposes. No, no, this is not. I mean, I'm sure some do, and I don't judge them for it. I, I'm sure some people find this a very entertaining movie, and I'm not going to judge them for it. I'm saying this is just for me. <laughs> yeah, it's not definitely one that I find entertaining myself either. There were times when I would subject myself to movies like this just because there was a mode where I was in where it was how much shock can I stand. And I, yeah. I think I'm getting to the point now where I'm like, you know what? I don't care if it's one that I've never seen before. If it's just going to be salacious and shocking for the sake of being salacious and shocking, maybe I'm I'm not that into it. Maybe. Uh, the things that this film's trying to do, I'm definitely not into the message in any way, shape, or form. I cannot deny, however, the effectiveness of the filmmaking, nor how it made me squirm when it was trying to make me squirm, or how it made me be endeared to the innocent family that were victims in all of this, as it did, and how it made me think more in depth about the whole of the person for all of these characters, who I did despise and all of the choices that they made on the other side of it. But the real really hard line push of gun solve the problem we need to do this punishment and everybody telling this woman that her choices are wrong and are going to cost her dearly and then we see it actually happen that can just fuck right off because i don't find that enjoyable at all and it kind of spoils the rest of the movie for me i'm not going to say that it's a bad film it's just totally not for me it may yeah. be for you and if it is cool but i fucking yeah, and i don't even judge you if this is for you i don't even now I, I maybe sort of judge you if you get down with the message that this movie is trying to put out. Uh, where I don't judge you is if just you like these type of movies. You know, these these kind of revenge, you know, type movies for your home invasion revenge movies. If you enjoy them, I am not judging you for that. That's just a brand of entertainment you like. Uh, this is just my opinion. Now, if you love the message this movie's putting out, then I kind of judge you a little bit. I have a problem with you because I, I have, I, we disagree on some very fundamental levels of what we believe life is. Well, yeah, I, I actually agree with that statement wholeheartedly. The only thing that I would kind of add addendum wise is I don't know how you're doing the mental gymnastics to ignore the message because it's right up in your face like the guy yeah. stroking his little tiny cock was on screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, not a lie. Not a lie at all. <laughs> 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 I mean, the message is so wholeheartedly yeah. the very backbone of what this film is that, like, I don't know how I would ignore it, you know? Yeah. 
No, I agree. I agree. I don't know how either. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that there is, I'm sure there are movies that I am like that with that I'm completely clueless to that. And I just watch them for entertainment value. I mean, I'm like that for a lot of the Death Wish movies, sure. But like this one, this one was a little too obvious for me to be able to just ignore, you know? It was way too much into your face. Yeah. Yeah. Like with Death Wish, you can somewhat ignore that narrative. You can really get into the action part and kind of just get lost into that. Uh, but with this one, there, there's not enough action to ignore the narrative. Yeah. Yeah. And the narrative is really pushing that agenda hard. It's, it's it really, really is. pushing it. Really is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's fair and balanced, man, because, you know. But it's totally fair and balanced. Come on. I mean, Jesus. <laughs> well, if we're going to be a little more fair and balanced to our audience, why don't we try and sneak in a quick news story and then we can move on. Oh, with our fuck. Lives. We're going to try to bounce back to a news story we, after this? We owe right. them, man. We really do. Don't you think? All right. Let's, let's, I mean, listen. I'm all for I'm all for giving it the good old college try. I just I'm like, all right, let me try to get my brain wrapped around going from this to a funny news story. <laughs> <laughs> well, the rest of us are going to try on the pirate radio edit while we listen to Slayer's cover of DRI's Violent Pacification. Slayer's cover of DRI's Violent Pacification for those of you listening on our Pirate Radio edit. And it doesn't matter to me if we're making the show that much fucking longer because we're all fucking depressed after that review. So let's cheer up the goddamn audience and give me some Zion news! from uh robert our man in the field robert our man in the field our first time in a while we've had a month from our man in the field robert just never got picked i'm glad that we've got it fixed yeah 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 uh so uh <laughs> this comes from i i don't know where he finds this stuff it's great this these websites this is from uh wt uh wnt uh, the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news. Anyway, drunk guests take clothes off and brawl at Disney Springs. Slip on vomit into bushes during fight. Coming to me! I'm going to need that again because I yeah. didn't get all, all of that. Yeah, yeah. No, not a problem. I it sounds like it could be a new ride. Place, but I cleaned it up. I don't know what they got a problem with. <laughs> Miss Drunk's Wild Ride instead of Mr. Toad? Yeah, right. Uh, drunk guests take clothes off uh-huh. and brawl at Disney Springs. They slip on vomit into bushes during a fight. Drunk guests take yeah. off clothes, uh-huh. get into a fight because they say brawl. Yeah. yeah. And while fighting, be clothed and drunk, slip on vomit somehow. Yeah. Not sure if it's theirs, fall into bushes. Yeah. Okay. Let's go into it. Yeah. Let's get into the meat of this. Pulling it just so, to pull it. Yeah, right? I mean, the headline alone is just fantastic. I need to know more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, in an ongoing series of recent fights at Walt Disney World, which I need to reschedule time to get down to Walt Disney World for a family vacation. <laughs> if this is if this is what's going to be happening, I'm just going to be happy there. Police arrested two drunk guests on multiple charges. Oh, the, arrest report, dummies. the arrest reports read like the plot of a Jersey Shore episode. Two sisters from New Jersey get into a drunken, naked fight. Only it did happen at the Garden State. It took place at Disney Springs. The two women, ages 29 and 31, were vacationing with their family in Orlando. That night, the sisters ate at a steakhouse and seemed to have been having an enjoyable evening at first, even if they were 30 minutes late to the reservation. They got drinks at an Irish restaurant. Oh shit, I've been there. 
Really? Yeah. Nice. When Bev and I went to Disneyland, uh, yeah, or World, yeah, or Disney oh. Disney World in Florida, yeah, we went to that yeah. island and we actually had dinner at that restaurant. That place is fucking incredible. Nice. Yeah. Well, then that's where the problems began. Well, yeah. Small once you, first, yeah, the, they really overserve you at the Irish Bar. Big shock. Do they? <laughs> I got to find the Irish bar. Jesus. Yes, you fucking um, do. It was built for you, Matt. It, it really was. Yeah. Huh? All right. Because <laughs> because here's the fight. It's me, the two sisters fighting. I just sit at the bar watching that shit go. And that's entertaining. <laughs> just fucking Disney, man. For the bottom dollar, Disney will enter- entertain you, motherfucker. I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, when the problems began, small at first, when they tried to go back to their hotel off Disney property, their phone died. Disney security helped them call an Uber. Their Uber driver refused to take them as he worried they were too drunk. Uh, valid concern. The women, yeah, valid. The women argued while waiting for a taxi, and their night unraveled. The older sister called the younger sister a bad mom and slapped her. The younger Gotta sister love a girl who can take a punch. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> the younger sister threatened to punch her in return. Gotta love a girl who can take a punch. It was late, around 12.40 a.m. Who's still awake at 12.40 a.m. around fucking Disney? <laughs> I know I I'm wasn't. Like so... I, I was too fucking exhausted. Yeah, I'm so fucking at, like, my last trip to Disney World, was, which was many years ago. Many years ago. Shortly but after re- we started the show. Yes, it was. It was shortly after we started the show. And uh, and I remember this because my son was actually shorter than me still. And I was exhausted at the end of every day. How the fuck could the... I mean, I don't even know how. Nowadays, like, I'm older now, like, many years older. And I'm like, I probably can't even last, like, half a day of what I was doing back then. Hmm. So it was... So then when the Orlando County Sheriff's Office got a dispatch about a fight happening at Disney Springs, it was about 1240 a.m. Oh, at Disney Springs? Oh, Jesus. Yeah. The younger sister was screaming and crying when they arrived near Cirque Cirque Soleil. Uh, she wore. <laughs> I love that no one will come pick them up and take them away from the thing. They can't get the water taxi away from it. No. Nothing. They're just Nothing. fucking trapped there. Yeah, no shit. She wore only her underwear and sandals. Deputies, I don't know how that happens. Deputies assisted her with putting on a, a blue jean jacket. Jump she, she was not wearing any clothing, the sheriff's report said. Deputies so, deputy soon learned the story of what had happened. A Disney security manager witnessed nearly everything. You know that with that guy, it was like his best night. It's what he tells it. He's like, dude, that's the story he tells everyone. This, this is the this story he tells manager. when he gets drunk yeah. at family gatherings for the rest yeah. of his life. And I guarantee you now it's funny, but what is it funny that night? Because he knows the paperwork he's going to have to fill out. It was probably just like, I just want to go home. So anyway. No, there's part of him that's kind of chuckling where he's like, man, when this is all said and done, this is going to make a great story. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there is part of him. He's like, fucking me, guys. It's always my night when this shit happens, you know? Let me tell you about this time at Disney Springs when these two sisters got lit at the Irish bar. He's probably standing there going, I'm not even supposed to be here tonight. So That's how deputies, it usually is. Yeah, right. Um, in the, the, okay, so this all, and this brawl happened October 26th. Oh man, during the Halloween time too, that part gets fucking rabid around then. Shit is um, lit. The sheriff's report did not release the report until this week, months later. So, quote, both females were screaming at each other. The security manager said one female was sitting on a bench while the second female was standing over her. I'm too in this to give a fuck about clips. Yeah, I know. After attempting to calm the situation, the security manager said one female slapped the other in the face. At that point, both females began punching, slapping, pulling each other's hair. Uh, the security manager pulled the two uh, drunk guests apart. Once separated, both sisters ran at each other, slipped in the younger sister's vomit, then fell into the bushes while still fighting. The security manager stated the younger sister ran a few feet away and took off her dress, exposing her breasts. Shortly after, they begin to punch each other again. The security manager and another cast member who witnessed the fight were able to separate the two again until the off-duty deputies arrived on the scene. Okay, so the cast member is the one that's really going to be telling this story at family get-togethers. The get cast together. member's the one having the most fun because they're going to have to fill out any paperwork. They're just they're, they're like, this is fucking hilarious. And with any luck, uh, they're in one of those giant fucking suits that they don't have to worry about getting hurt from either of the two ladies. Yeah, my, my big hope is it's Gaston. That's who I'm hoping. It's Gaston who had to do that. Okay. <laughs> it just seems funny to me. Guy dressed up as Gaston for Beauty of the Beast is having to pull up heart two drunk girls. No one stops a fight like Gaston. <laughs> no one's tired. Yeah, there you go. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> 
It's so stupid it works. Fucking like, shit. Jesus Christ, I had that in there. <laughs> yeah, it's, I guess people don't realize that I do actually like Disney shit. I'm not as hardcore as everybody yeah, thinks right? I am, apparently. Hold on. <laughs> Surprised your ass, didn't I? It's just, well, I knew you liked Disney, but I didn't know you were going to pull out no one stumps a fight like Gaston. That's part one. Part two, I'm mad I didn't come up with that joke in the first place. <laughs> right? <laughs> I was even, like, holding back trying to let you have that one. Oh, God, I can't believe I didn't think of that one. Jesus. Hold on. Uh, okay. <laughs> it brings up a fight like Gaston. Oh, no, I really hope it was Gaston. Anyway, the report noted that Disney did not have video surveillance of the drunken naked brawl. Sad. When the deputies questioned the younger sister, the report said she only wanted to talk about how she didn't like her sister's boyfriend. The officers arrested the drunk guest for domestic violence, battery, and disorderly intoxication, which are misdemeanor crimes. Neither woman sustained injuries. Whoa, sisters can get charged with domestic violence. Yeah. They were very intoxicated, the sheriff's report noted, and endangered the safety of other guests and cast members at Disney Springs by physically fighting in public area. Until someone they broke don't... up that fight like Gaston. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, he's the best. He's Gaston. Of course. Uh, in November, uh, the state attorney's office declined to pursue criminal charges, basically saying both sisters should just be embarrassed enough and that's punishment. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's not what it says. Um, in November, the <laughs> I state mean, that's Attorney's what office it means. <laughs> declined to pursue criminal charges. Both sisters requested the other not be prosecuted, according to Orange Circuit uh, Court records. Since they aren't facing criminal charges, the guests were renamed unnamed. So they got out of this pretty luckily that no one's going to know. Although they're, they're going to have to, like. Well, I could probably fix that for a blowy. The, those two sisters sound like they'll probably have their own fucking story about, hey, you remember that time we got a drunken brawl at Disney World? <laughs> oh my god, and we slipped on that vomit, who might, which might have been one of ours, and ended up that, in the bushes, and then and Gaston like, broke up our fight like no one else could? Yeah, oh my god, Gaston, we got to meet Gaston. Or that, or they're going to be sitting there, it's going to be a silent family dinner, and some younger brother, younger than both the sisters, is going to go, you guys remember that time when you got blitzed, hammered, and fun at Disney World? <laughs> It's like at Grandma's last Thanksgiving too, and she didn't know about it. <laughs> it's it, and it's going to and he's going to save that, and it's going to be like ah, oh, they're going to be giving him shit at a dinner table. You know, you need to get some direction in your life. The parents are going to be on him. Yeah, you need to get some direction. You, you you've been working at the you know you've been doing your same job forever, and it's an entry level. You got to do direction, direction, direction. He's going to stop. You guys ever remember when my sisters got a drunken fight and? vomited all over fucking Disney World. You guys remember that? There's just gonna be silence at the table. And he goes, yeah, that's what I thought. I'm not so bad, am I? And with that, we're gonna go ahead and close out the show with the Ending Legion promo. And when we come back, we will have some Oingo Boingo capitalism to close this out. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick Six Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which Versus the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com com itunes spotify stitcher youtube and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found
I can't tell if that's supposed to be irony or if uh, Danny Elfman and Oigo Bugger really have an issue with a socialist kid talking bad about capitalism or not. I don't really know, but it fits really, really well with all of the discussion that we've had this evening because of the downer of a movie that I don't want to bring us all back to. Yeah, yeah, let's uh, let, let's not go back there. We, we just ended it up on an uptick, you know what I mean? Yeah, naked sister fight at Disneyland's uh, <laughs> Disney Island or wherever. That's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, we had a wonderful moment where I made a quote about Gaston that made you laugh and we're all happy and cheerful and we're not going back to that horrible time in that horrible place. That's right. That's in the past. Other things that are in the past can be found in our Legion landing and or launching page. <laughs> Legionpodcast.com forward slash cinema dash psyops dash podcast. Smooth. That was smooth. It's all I had at this particular moment. And other I'm things telling you that was good. Other things that are moved about smoothly across the internet is our memes which start first in our Instagram feed of cinema underscore psyops. Yeah, we, we got some of the freshest memes around, man. We have memes for your World War Three needs. <laughs> it may be the end of civilization as we know it, but we've got some great fucking memes at cinema underscore psyops on Instagram. You, you can at least have a laugh on the way out. <laughs> if you'd like to ratio us because of our lackadaisical way of handling a crisis with which we are both clearly panicked, you can find me <laughs> at court underscore psyop, or you can ratio me there, or cancel me, or whatever the fuck it is you kids are doing with Twitter. Yeah, I just, I, don't, I, I follow the porn bots that's all i fucking do so i don't know yeah, how i'm gonna get canceled I, I really just follow news people uh who who, who are been reporting on this for a while so <laughs> matt has been paranoid about this and terrified and glad that he's been proven right and is no way overblowing what is happening in proportion because of his fear i mean i could be but i might not be so there you go. Let that stick in your fucking craw. If you'd like to check the previous instances where Matt has declared that it is World War fucking three on this show in the middle of a recording, you can find that at legionpodcast.com forward slash cinema dash psyops dash podcast. They exist, dude. They are there. Yeah, it, it has happened alarmingly a lot. I have done. I'll fully admit that. <laughs> if you'd... I fully admit, I really have becoming chicken little here. <laughs> the sky's falling. One of the places that will probably be okay if the sky does fall is our Facebook group, Cinema Psyops. <laughs> and by okay, Unless I Zuckerberg. mean we all know this was going to happen anyway. Unless Zuckerberg feels like you talking about the sky falling violates terms and standards three years ago, so you're done. <laughs> or you posted a photo of a serial killer in our group seven years ago, and I'm getting group quality marks on it. Yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, I'm Court Psyops on Facebook for the time being until something better comes along, and for God's sakes, can it be something? Something not Trump trying to push. Yeah, please, please, please. <laughs> if you'd like to try and talk me into giving a chance to some type of a platform because it is quote unquote fair and balanced, first of all, fuck off. But you can try that at cinemasyopscourt at gmail.com. <laughs> good, good fucking luck. <laughs> well, while you're out there trying to push your own personal agendas, declaring once again that it is fair and balanced, kick the fuck out of this week and make it your bitch. <laughs> You hear me okay? Yep. Don't hear myself very well. That's a little better. I, I'm recording on my side. One, two, three. How's the waveform looking from the snowball? Looking good. 
All right, you know how sometimes people declare things like, oh, I can hear a difference, and you think they're absolutely insane where they think, like, you know, a digital file doesn't sound as good as, like, a like say, an analog record because they think the lows are better even though you know that's scientifically impossible? Yeah. I can tell the difference from the fact that your microphone is only 16-bit versus a 24-bit microphone. <laughs> like, I can hear the digitization in your voice <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm editing and stuff, and it's been driving yeah. me nuts for, like, the entire length of the pandemic that we've been doing this. Like, you're the one who suggested this microphone. I was going to get a, uh, a different microphone. <laughs> no, you did that on your own. I suggested a different microphone to you. You suggested this blue microphone. No, I didn't suggest a blue snowball for you. I suggested a blue oh. snowball for your son. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> 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 They all start exploring uh, the uh, different options here. Well, you could do that, or we could actually just start trying to get it back in studio again, if you don't mind making the drive. We'll talk about that at some other point, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I guess enough fucking a boot, as they like to say. And we should probably start the show. Can you hear this? Yeah. And you did do the film Hunting Ground like was in the schedule, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hunting Ground. That's what I did. Uh, Yeah, yeah. you're goddamn right. That's what I sat fucking through. (laughs) All right. All right. He's up. Uh, I'm sorry. The schedule has been fully updated. One file that got changed over. That's in one of the folders. I think it's like movies two or three. One of those folders that we have shared to move stuff around. So everything's everything's squared away for the rest of this film fucking year. Keep going. We're fine. I'm just... No, I know. I was just drinking. Oh. Uh, all right. <laughs> when are you not drinking, Matt? You're always drinking. I'm worried about your drinking. Oh, wait. Water. Go this ahead. This is the only way I can love you, Cork. <laughs> God, just like my father, Matt. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, fuck. Dude, I was just joking. Are you all right? Everything okay over there? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to t- trigger a warning on that one. It's, a, it's all right, man. I'm going to be getting another tattoo soon. I'll be doing a whole sleeve like as... It's, 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 it's great. I'm going to spend as much time on it as possible every day getting a whole sleeve done. So it's going to hurt what? real good and I'll be okay. Then what's it going to be this time? <laughs> I don't know, but it's just the pain that I need right now. I'll, I'll figure out the rest later. Figure it out later. <laughs> we don't have enough time in this show for me to describe my new sleeve to you, my man. The passion's gone because she's starting to realize, Matt, that the right wing is actually right. This Kevin Sorbo production brought to you by Fox News. Listen, she's starting to realize that apparently, you know, D- D- Tucker Carlson is becoming her new favorite person. Uh, she's so- just as upset about the big naturals disappearing on the bunny from the fucking Space Jam. Yeah, she's she's really mad that uh, that people no longer want to fuck a cartoon rabbit. And which you want to tell Tucker Carlson, don't worry, everyone still wants to fuck a cartoon rabbit. <laughs> there are plenty of them out there. They have subreddits. <laughs> and Matt has read them all and masturbated to it. Hey, hey. Not judging, just stating. Not judging, just stating. I've never masturbated to it. I only read it for the articles. This it's, is their it's, family time. And the reason I recognize it as family time is because this is the type of family time that I can recognize. <laughs> you all right over there, buddy? Are they okay? <laughs> yeah, dude, I got this bitch and sleeve plan, but like I said, we don't have enough time to talk about it. <laughs> Not enough time to talk about that. Maybe that should be a Patreon show. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to make court do a podcast while he's getting his sleeve done. <laughs> <laughs> all you'll hear is, oh! <laughs> anyway, this one is for this movie. <laughs> Yeah, this one's for the sequel. That's not inaccurate, but also you're a dick. <laughs> you're not wrong. I'm not wrong. I'm just an asshole. In this case, yes. You're not wrong. You're just an asshole. Whoop. Circle jerk. <laughs> wrong one. <laughs> They're trying to push your own personal agendas, declaring once again that as fair and balanced, kick the fuck out of this weekend, make it your bitch. <laughs>
<laughs> nice. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Fucking Jesus. And I have stopped recording.